We've had Mud and Debris Flow in HEC RAS for a couple of years now, since version 6.0, and we've used it for post wildfire and mine tailing dam breach failure analysis, and it's given pretty good results. We got some papers out on that. But one of the things that we've run into is kind of a hesitation to use it because it's a full kind of mechanistic non-Newtonian physics model. And it kind of gets compared to what I hear called expedited methods. And that's great, and I'm glad that there are expedited methods out there. You always want to choose the right level of complexity for your problem. But I also kind of want to make the point that it's actually not that hard to do this kind of non-Newtonian debris flow modeling. In fact, you can build a model pretty quickly for an emergency management type application and get a rough answer with a physics-based model relatively quickly. And to demonstrate that, I'm gonna borrow a page from the uh, video game YouTubers that my son watches, and I'm gonna do a speed run. I'm going to start from basically nothing, basically the USGS website with the shape file of the burn area and build a full non-Newtonian debris flow model and time it just to kind of demonstrate how long that takes and to show that you can get pretty good expedited answers even if you don't have any data with HEC RAS. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna walk through this expedited debris flow tutorial on our website and I'll put the link down below. We're gonna look at a burn event that happened a few years ago and we'll just go to the USGS hazard site that I have linked there. And this USGS hazard site is excellent. It's really useful. They basically have all of the big wildfires of the last few years and shape files for what the actual burn rate was. If you go to the recent ones, they'll kind of show you the burn area and the percent chance that there's gonna be a debris flow in that burn area. And so right after this event in 2000, these were the percentages. And you can see that there are some very high percentages, 80 to 100%, and there was actually a debris flow here. Now, if you go to this site, you'll see that it's several years later. So those percentages have dropped, but we're gonna go and at the bottom here, they still have those shape files from what they were. And so that's what we're gonna start with. You know, you can do this you know, right after a debris flow. They're gonna put the shape files up here. So this is really the only thing that we're gonna start with. We're gonna start with basically whatever you would have if you were trying to do one of these. So we're gonna save the link as. So I have downloaded those files here. And you have some extents and you basically have these polygons that are associated with the high probability events. And really what we wanna do is we wanna model this watershed area that has a high probability, like 80 to 100% chance of debris flow. And there actually was a debris flow um, with this populated area downstream. So that's what we're gonna to try to model. Okay, so that's really where I'm gonna start. And so I am going to open RAS. I'll give myself that. And then I'm going to start my clock. Go. All right, so I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to have to find where I put that. I think I put it in big data and it's speedrun. And I'm going to call this speedrun. OK. And it says, hey, it's US customary units. Yeah, that's not really what I want because these come in in SI. And so I'm going to change this to SI. And then, well, what's the next thing I need? Well, I need a projection. Well, where on earth, on earth am I going to find that? Because this is in the middle of Utah somewhere. I don't know where this is. I don't know the projection. Well, I have a shape file. And shape files have projections. And so I can just choose any one of these projections and it will project me into the projection of that shape file. Okay, well, how do I know? Well, I kind of want to add a map layer because I, I want to see where these risks, risk zones are. So let me just get one of these map layers and pull it over here. And now we can zoom to this. And there we go. We've got all of those risk zones. And so now let's go and we'll actually add the imagery so we can kind of see where we are in the world. Let's add Google Satellite. And we can see there is our hollow and that is kind of pointing towards the community downstream. And so if I zoom out of this, this is kind of the area I want. Um, what if, what do we need next? Well, we need a train. Well, I don't have a train. This is an expedited model. We, someone just asked me to do it. Well, let's see what trains we can get then. We'll use this tool, the download train data, and go to the USGS and just see what's publicly available. And so this says, hey, we're going to query products from the current view. 
And it turns out there are a lot of products. And so I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? I want the one meter products. And so now we can go in and we can look at what those are. And this, uh, this one right here, well, that turns out to be this area that we're primarily interested in. So let's do that one. So I'm gonna bring that in, press download. And that's coming in pretty quick. All right, we've got it. And so then, and you could bring both of them in if you want. Um, but then I still don't have a train, right? So I need to create a new train and I'm going to add that file. And you'll see we put it in a folder called USGS and we'll create the train. And this will actually take a little while. This will burn some of my time, but I'll keep that clock running if I cut some of this. Okay, so that took about 27 seconds. Um, it would take probably two minutes if I'd used both terrains, but let's actually see what kind of coverage I got. Well, that's the coverage I want, actually. And so I'm going to look at how this area could impact downstream. And so really, I'm gonna start just kind of right at the beneath that confluence. So let's go create a geometry file, and I'll just call it G1. And it's associated with the train, awesome. And so then let's edit the geometry file and let's go to the 2D flow area and perimeter and I'm going to start drawing. And so I'll zoom in and I want to start just below that confluence because that's essentially where I think the event would be. I press shift if I want to pan while I'm drawing and I'll just make this kind of big to include this whole area downstream of it that I think it could incorporate I made that a little narrower than I wanted to so and this you can do this iterative if it's too small then you know you can uh, you can change it but let's make this 10 by 10 and I'm gonna say this is pretty rough this is urban area and a steep channel so I'll make it point two and we generate computation points close but actually I want to make this a little bit bigger I think I don't trust my intuition on that so let's just make it bigger um, so we can capture and so I'll come in here and we'll go back to edit properties and redo that and I've got about 50,000 cells all right so now if I zoom in here I think the first thing I would do after the expedited step is I'd probably try to refine that a little bit and direction of flow but this is an expedited model we're just gonna see what kind of answer we can get as fast as possible so I'm gonna go turn on my boundary conditions and I'm gonna turn on a boundary condition right there and let's just call it BC line one and I'm done I'm done with my geometry so I'm gonna say yes do you want to save that yes I do and let's close out and so then I'm gonna open my geometry file and open the geometry I just made because you have to link the geometry with the mapper. And there it is. And so then I'm gonna open my flow file. And so this is the one part where I'm gonna bring some outside information in because we ran this in HMS. And so we actually do know that, like we kind of expect this to peak at nine CMS and maybe be about a 30 minute peak. And so I'll change this to one minute And we'll go from zero to at 30 minutes, we'll make it nine CMS. And then at one hour, we'll make it zero. We'll say the whole event takes um, one hour and we'll go down to zero. But really it's just that peak of nine that we're looking for. And I'll press interpolate and we'll plot the data and you can see we've just kind of developed a triangular event there now you may want to run this longer um, if it takes a while for the event to run out um, which would be fine i'm going to do tailwater control and i need this bc line so let's go how would i get that well i'm just going to come in here and i'm going to use my measure tool and i'm going to kind of measure the slope across this boundary condition it's about negative 0.15 and so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say that the slope here is 0.15. And that's used, just used to apportion the flow across those upstream cells. Okay, well now I have flow. So let's save the unsteady flow data as um, Q1. All right, and so then I just need a plan to tie it all together. And so, oh no, I haven't done my non-Newtonian yet. 
And so under our flow file, we're gonna go to the non-Newtonian methods. And so this might seem a little bit hard, but it's not as hard as it seems because we've really bounded this. If you go to Bingham, which is the simplest, and we have whole videos on this, um, we're gonna, it asks you, what is the volumetric concentration? Now, again, we used HMS to come up with a volumetric concentration of 70, but this will generally run 50 to 80. And so you could bound it with those. And then we're gonna bulk the fluid with this volume because we haven't taken it into account yet. And then you have the two hardest parameters, the viscosity and the yield strength. Well, with viscosity, our practice is to, you know, limit it to something real, like, you know, ketchup or honey. And so about a hundred is what we do there. And then the yield is the more uncertain. We bound that usually between 700 and 2,500. So we run one run of each. Um, and so we'll make this our 700 run. And there it is. So now we're gonna go to our plan file and we'll save as, and we'll call this P1. I would give these all better names if I wasn't doing a speed run, but for now I'll just call it P1. Okay, we only have to do the geometry preprocessor and unsteady flow. You don't do sediment because this isn't a sediment model. This is actually a fixed bed model. And let's give it at 01 January 2100, just so people know that this is a synthetic event. 01 January 2100. And let's run it for six hours. Um, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0600, because if it's a one hour event, that'll give it plenty of time to work through. And then if you think it's like a 10 meter cell, uh, you want to keep the current number close to one. So I'm going to say you know, three to 10 seconds. Let's try four. And then um, we're going to have five minute mapping. And uh, let's do five minutes with each of these two. All right, I think that's what we need. Let's see what happens. We'll run it. Oh, and it says time series ends before the end of the simulation. So because this is a speed run, you get to see me make mistakes in real time. And so that's right, I, uh, I don't have enough data here. And so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say, well, let's say 400 ordinance and I'm gonna put a zero down here. You can see now that encompasses all six hours. Um, so now my speed run includes an error, and then I'll come in here and run. And we're closing in on 10 minutes. And I probably will cut some of this. All right, so that took about a minute to run. And so now I'm going to go open mapper before I stop my timer to look at the result and see if it makes any sense. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to look at the depth map and see how the depth turned out and then I'm actually going to run it to see if it looks stable and it does and so I'm going to stop my timer. And so that's 11 minutes and 18 seconds under 11 and a half minutes. And so now we're just going to do some aesthetic stuff. We're going to change this to mud because it's a mud flow and then we'll zoom in and take a closer look at what's going on here. So let's actually animate this in real time now you can see it is stable you're not getting pulsing and um, let's change the terrain so that it's it updates with legend that'll give you a little bit better result now we come to depth and we can look at it again and so you would run this again with 2500 and that would kind of give you the bounds of your potential range and that's a pretty good result we actually did this as an expedited analysis kelly jemis did that model and it formed the communities to make some decisions now i went through all that pretty quickly but it's all in this expedited reflow tutorial you can actually walk through all these steps yourself just starting with that usgs website and you could try it for other ones as well but the big idea here is that you know it's a, under 12 minutes to get to a result if you do have to come up with a debris flow map with some hydrologic and concentration assumptions, you know you can get to an answer with RAS with just publicly available information pretty quickly. I'm Stanford Gibson. I'm the sediment transport specialist at HEC, and this video was funded by the H Agency SET program.